So glad to have you with us again at God's Got a Plan. We're so glad that we're able to bring you an exciting show today, I believe. I believe this show is going to really be able to help us come in line with God's word. Our theme tonight is how to meet God's requirements, meeting God's requirements. And that's really what this is about. When we can meet God's requirements, then we can receive the provision that God wants to give us. And I believe that God is a God that is able to bless exceedingly and abundantly. So those of you who are watching us tonight, let's gear up. If you have a, a Bible handy, a pad, pencil, uh, take some notes. And if we can just follow along with this scripture that I'm going to give you coming out of the book of Deuteronomy, I believe that we all can come away from this program to, today blessed. Okay? So turning to Deuteronomy chapter 10, coming out of the 12, starting at the 12th verse, uh, here's what it says. Here's what it says. And it says, and now Israel, and where it says Israel, I want you to put your name there. Whatever your name might be, I want you to put your name there. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of you? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day, for thy good, for your good. So we're going to break that down. We're going to break these two verses down. And I believe that, you know, if we can just kind of break this down, we can get a real good understanding of what God is talking about, okay, in reference to meeting his requirements. And, you know, these requirements now, they're not strenuous, but I want you to understand it is possible to do this. But you have to have a desire. You have to be committed to the process. See, once we come to Christ, he allows us now to enter into this process where we are now being sanctified daily. Uh, let's look at that 12th verse. Let's look at that 12th verse. It says, and now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of you? In that first thing. That first thing is to what? To fear the Lord thy God. Now, I want you to understand now, I'm not talking about a maniacal fear. I'm talking about a reverential fear for a holy God. I'm talking about a just God, a God that loves you, a God that is not in your life to, to hurt you, to bring pain and suffering on you needlessly. Anything that he allows you to go through, it's for a reason. But we, the Bible says the first sign of wisdom is to fear God. And when we can have a reverential fear for God, I reverence you, Lord. I, I, I reverence you. I, I realize that you're the, 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 the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And I reverence you and I have a, 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 a respect for you. You know, when you respect somebody, you want to you want to look good in their sight. And that's what God wants us to be able to do. He wants us to be able to understand that when we have a fear for him, there's some things that we're doing that is wrong, that once you have a fear for God, you won't do that anymore. God is trying to get you to stop doing some things. And we have to realize now this flesh want to do what it want to do. And this flesh is not afraid of God. This flesh is not afraid of God. This flesh want to do those things that would bring, oh, I would say pain and suffering on this body. And we do things to ourselves that, you know, that, that don't make us feel good. And that and it's not designed to make you feel good. Why? Because sin has no shame. 
But I want you to understand when you have a fear for God, a reverential fear for God, because I'm talking about what? A holy God. I'm talking about a righteous God, a just God, a God that love you, not because of who you are, but loving you because of what he know he has made you to be, or should I say, called you to be. He know what he put in each and every one of us. He knows our abilities. He know what we're able to do. He know our capacity. He know what we can handle. He will never give you more than what you can bear. But you need to have a fear for God. You need to have a fear for God. And then look what it goes on to say. A fear for God to walk, what? In all of his ways. So we have to walk in all of his ways. Now, how will I know how to walk in all of his ways? Well, a good place to start is in his word. His word will teach you how to walk in his ways. His Holy Spirit will guide you down this highway called life. We are, we are to walk in all of his ways. In order to know his ways, I have to know him. How well do you know God? How well do you know his son? Do you really know him? That's the question tonight. Do you really know him? You know, because many of us, you know, we talk about how much we love him. But I believe that the Lord says, why do you say you love me, but you don't do what I say do? So we realize our walk is going to demonstrate. Our walk is going to really prove really what is in us. You know, many of us, we can talk a good talk. But God is trying to get us to that place where, where we're not just walking, uh, talking the talk, but we're walking the walk. That's what this is about. I want to walk my talk. In other words, I want to be in line with God's word. I want to live that life that is conducive to proper growth and development. I want to be able to grow, to mature in developing this word of God. This word of God will teach me how to walk that walk. Why? Because when I have a reverential fear for God and I'm walking in all of his ways, I want to do those things that's going to be pleasing to him. Let's look what it says. Let's look what it says. Why am I doing that? I'm doing that because I love him. I'm doing that because I love him and to love him and to serve him. Lord Jesus, I love him. You see, when you love God, there's some things that you used to do you don't want to do no more. There's some places I used to go. I don't want to go there no more. You know, there's a change taking place in my life. In other words, the man, the woman that I was is not that person I am today. And the person that I am today, I can, be, I can rest assured of knowing that I'm not going to be that person tomorrow. And I'm not talking about tomorrow being another day. I'm talking about tomorrow being six months from now, a year from now. If I keep doing this, if I can meet God's requirements, I'm here to tell you, you can see a positive change in your life. That's what God want to do. See, he want to show you how much he loves you. And he shows you how much he loves you by allowing you to see, oh, such a tremendous change in your life. You know, you know. In regards of what others see of you, how do you see yourself today? You see, when you can see yourself through the eyes of grace, I want you to understand, my God, my God, I'm not that person I used to be. And I'm learning how to love God more and more each day. Because, you know, I'm learning to appreciate this life, value this life even more and more each day. It's going to take loving God in order to come into that place where my life will have meaning. Your life will have meaning. See, God wants you to understand that the quality of your life is going to be based upon the love that you have for him and the love that you have for yourself and the love that you have towards others. You know, we're here really to serve. And when I say serve, not to serve ourselves but to serve God. We serve God by serving others. We here at God's Got a Plan, it's our desire to serve you with this word of God so you can know that if you can meet God's requirements, God can change the circumstances surrounding your life. 
But what we have to do now and what you have to do is take an honest look within yourself. You know, because sometimes we might want to treat God the way we treat people. You know, you'll tell people how much you love them, but you, you'll, you'll do some things uh, against them or you'll talk about them when you leave them and, 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 and you, you make promises to them that you don't keep. And we've done the same thing to God. We've made promises to him that we don't keep. We, we've talked about how much we love him, but we're not doing what he says do. And God is trying to get us to know that if we are lovers of him, if you really love him, you're going to want to serve him. You want to serve the Lord with all your heart and with all of your soul. In other words, everything you have within you, you want to serve him. You want to serve him and you want to serve him to the best of your ability. In other words, I believe the Bible says don't get weary in well-doing. In everything, my God, I want to give him praise. In everything, I put my whole self in it. You know, think about, you know, before you came to Christ, those of you that might have been out there living a promiscuous life and out there ripping and running and, you know, uh, let's just say uh, living beneath your means and doing those things that wasn't good. You know, you put your whole self into doing those things that was tearing you down, uh, marring your name, uh, discoloring the, 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 the man or the woman that you were or are or called to be. I want you to understand. I want you to understand when you begin to meet God's requirements, you're going to be able to serve God with a willing heart. See, we have to have a willing heart. We have to be committed to the process. In other words, I'm sold out. Are you sold out today? See, you have to ask yourself, am I really sold out or am I connecting to God or do I want to be connected to God just so I can use him? In other words, I want what's in his hand, but I don't know him by face. See, God wants he wants you to know him. He wants you to know him. Don't look to see what's in his hand. Look to know him face to face. That's what that's what Abraham wanted to know. He wanted to see him face to face. And God wants you to know when you desire to know him. Oh, God is saying to, today, tonight, that you can have that kind of relationship with him where he's able to bless you. Why? Because he see your heart. You have a willing heart to serve. Whether it's to go into the prison, whether it's to pass out tracts, whether it's to visit the sick or whether it's to raise a child. You know, we, 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 we don't realize that there are some things that God has called us to that, you know, it might not be as, uh, how can I put it, as a big a job as a pastor. Maybe it's just to tell somebody on the highway or the byway, someone that you might know in the community that might be going through, just to let them know that they can make it, just to, to give them a hand, a hand up and not a push down. That's doing a great work, a great thing for the Lord. And that's what God is trying to do. He's trying to get us to see that there's no big eyes in the kingdom. The only big eye in the kingdom is Christ. I want you to understand he's the one that made the way for all of us. And if we can follow Christ, the Bible says when we're able to deny ourselves and to pick up our cross and follow him, he's now able to bring us into that place. He's able to bring you into that place where you're now able to meet his requirements. That's what this is about. And Deuteronomy here in, in chapter 10 is trying to tell us how to meet God's requirements. You see, because, you know, when you get into a relationship with somebody, they're going to kind of tell you what expected of you. In other words, you know, don't cross this line, so on and so forth. And, and if you can treat me right, I'll treat you right, so on and so forth. And God is trying to tell us tonight or tell you tonight, when you meet his requirements, he's able to bring the provision. He's able to bring the provision. Now, let's keep going down. I want to show you another, a fifth requirement to keep his commandments. Look what he says. Keep the commandments of the Lord in his statutes, which I command you this day. If you can meet God's commandments in his statutes, which he command you this day, what is he saying? He'll bless you. 
And that's what this is about. And I don't know nobody on the planet that don't want to be blessed by God. You know, now there are those that might not believe in God, but, but I'm here to tell you, isn't it amazing how we can find ourselves going to jail or find ourselves going to the hospital, uh, somewhat beat up in a car accident or whatever, and, and we might feel like we're going to lose a body part or we might lose our life or something, and now... Oh, how we can get so humble and want to come to God. Oh, God, please bless me. Please forgive me. See, you want to know him now. Don't just know him when you're in a problem. Don't just come to him weeping and crying when things are coming down on you and your world is caving in. See, God's saying, I don't just want to be there for you when times are hard. I want to be there with you even when you're enjoying yourself. I want to enjoy life with you. You know, and I realize that that there are going to be times when I just got to go through some things and I'm going to feel like there's nobody there for me. I'm going to feel like I'm so alone. But that's when I want you to know. I want you to listen to this now. When you're at that place where you feel so alone, I want you to understand that the Lord is with you. I believe scripture says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will be closer than a brother. And he will be better than a friend. Oh, God loves you so much. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. And if I can just take you over here to Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. There's something in Joshua chapter 1 that I believe that can bless you. Joshua chapter 1 in the 8th verse says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate meditate therein and therein day and night that thou may observe to do according to all that is written. See, do all that is written in the book. See, see, and, and as it says now, this word should be in our mouths. In other words, that should be my conversation. See, the way I used to talk, I don't talk that way no more. You know, because we used to be out there cursing like a sailor. We used to be talking about I can't do, I don't deserve, uh, nobody loves me. See, I want you to understand that kind of conversation comes from the enemy. You see, because I am somebody because God didn't make no junk when he made me. I am chosen. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. So I want you to understand that when I can meditate upon this word of God, this word of God will build you up. This word of God will build you up to that place to where you want to meet God's provisions, where you want to meet God's conditions, his requirements, where you want to be able to do those things that would be pleasing in his sight. Let me finish reading that, 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 that Joshua chapter 1 and 8. That thou may observe to do according to all that is written in the book. What am I talking about? Doing all that is written in his word. See, when we can live up to this word of God, and I'm going to tell you now, in order to live up to the word of God, you have to know the word of God. And this is why, you know, Joshua, well, Joshua is mentioned here in Joshua that we are to what? We are to meditate upon this word of God. See, Joshua was the successor of Moses. In other words, when Moses was able to bring the children of Israel uh, right to the, let's just say, to the, to the edge right to the edge of Canaan. He wasn't able to enter, but he was able to pass the baton to Joshua. And God gave Joshua the same commandments that he gave to Moses. And he says that if you, was to observe, if you can just observe and to do all of what you have been taught, just like your mentor, Moses, and you now, the mentee, if you can do what the mentor instructed you, and the Bible even refers to Joshua as the minister of Moses. So I want you to understand that we are all called to be ministers of this word of God. You are called to be a minister of the word of God, but you can't be a minister of the word of God if you don't know the word of God. And if you don't know the word of God, it's no way possible you're going to be able to meet God's requirements. And this is why Deuteronomy chapter 10 in the 12th and 13th verse is so very important because it's going to teach you 
how to meet God's requirements. And when we can meditate upon this word of God, this word of God is able to do some things within us. You know, there, there's a saying that when you read this word of God, see, you have the privilege of having the author of the book with you. The author of the book is with you as you read the word of God and the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. He will take you down into places within this word of God. Oh, my God, I, I can't even begin to explain or to express it because, first of all, his ways are not our ways. And I want you to understand whatever it is that's holding you, keeping you from doing that which you want to do that would be pleasing in his sight. So you can meet his requirements. I want you to understand you can make it if you try. Uh, don't give up. Don't give in. You got to stick and stay. You got to keep on standing through the trials, through the tests. You got to know that the Lord is with you because he wants you to be able to succeed and not fail. That's the whole plan of God is for us to succeed and not fail. Why be saved if I'm going to be a failure? Why would God save you so you can be a failure? Are you, are you hearing me? See, that doesn't make sense. To, see, I might as well stayed out there. I might as well stayed lost if I'm going to remain a failure. So God saved me because he wants me to be successful. He wants me to be a winner at the game called life. He wants me to be able to prove him in your life, in my life. And that's what this is about. Why? Because God loves you better than you even love yourself. He wants to show you that he can love you better than you can love yourself. If you would just begin to meet his requirements, he'll show you a kind of love. Oh, my God, a kind of love that will just cause you to wonder what took me so long to come to him. L let me finish reading this, this eighth verse. Look what he says. If you can do all that is written according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Lord Jesus, good success. Did, did you hear what I said? Good success. See, because you can, you know, you got some people out there trying to be successful, and they're doing some things that are not good. In other words, they're, they're gaining their success in an underhanded way. They have to look over their shoulders because they might be out there selling drugs or they might be out there stealing. They, they might be out there doing those things that are unseemly in reference to the things of God. See, a, a, a man of God, a woman of God, a child of God, we, we, we're not going to live like that. We're not going to follow the dictates of the world, the ways of the world. Oh, no, the Bible says come out from among them. Why? Because we're coming out from, the among, from among them. Why? Because God wants us to be blessed. He wants you to be blessed. And I'm hoping tonight that this message is getting through to you tonight. And you understand that once you take up ooh, the call, the charge, this is a charge. This is a, there's a call on your life. Ah, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 1, I believe it is, that we're to walk worthy of the vocation. You can't walk worthy of the vocation or the call that is on your life if you don't know the word of God. That book that is on your lap, that book that is, on, that is in the bookcase, that Bible that is under the bed, that Bible that is in the cupboard, uh, it's time to pull it out. It's time to dust it off. It's time to start turning some pages and to get to know the author of the book. And as I said, you are blessed to have the author with you. And let me read that ninth verse because that's, this is what it's going to take. Have not I commanded you, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. See, when, 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 when you are meeting God's requirements, the Bible says God have not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love in a sound mind. Are you hearing me? God have not given you a spirit of fear. What is fear? Fear is a spirit. So when you find yourself operating in fear, when you find yourself cowering, 
That's a spirit that has come over you. If I'm going to be fearful of anything or anybody, let me be fearful of God. Anything other than God, it is a spirit of the enemy trying to overtake you. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, in a sound mind. And if you look at where love is, love is sandwiched between power in a sound mind. And I want you to understand it works when you work it. This word works when you work it. And we have to be of a good courage. You have to be of a good courage. Are you hearing me? Of a good courage. Why? And be not, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. Lord Jesus, I don't care where you go on the planet, even off the planet, under the planet. I don't care where you go. The Lord is with you. He's with you today to let you know that he's not far. Some of you are looking at this program tonight, today. Why? Because he wants you to know if you can just meet his requirements, he'll bless you. He want to turn your situation around. And I want you to understand, don't get weary in well-doing. Those of you that might be a little weary out there, don't get weary. Keep on keeping on. Oh, your ship is about to come in. I'm here to tell you there's a breakthrough right over the horizon. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning. Someone's about to step into their morning season. Have a reverential fear for God. Walk in all of his ways. Love him. Serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and keep his commandments to the best of your ability. Pursue God. Pursue God. And as you pursue God, God will begin to open doors. He will begin to bless you in ways that will that will let you know that it had to be God. Because I've been you've been trying a long time to fix yourself, to bless yourself, and you haven't been able to do it. Begin to meet God's requirements, and God will show you that he can bless you, and he can do it better than anybody else. Father, I pray right now that this message, Father God, will be a blessing to your people. I pray, Father God, that you will lift our spirit. I pray, Father, that you will turn a weary soul around. I pray, Lord God, that you will now order our steps Help us now to get into your word and help us to learn to walk by faith and not by sight. I have some closing thoughts I want to give you. My potential is God's gift to me. What I do with my potential is my gift to God, is your gift to God. You have to be able to give back to God what God has given to you. There's a lesson. I don't want to go into it now. I don't have enough time. But God blessed Abraham with the son, Isaac. And Abraham had to give his son, Isaac, back to God on the altar of sacrifice. So whatever God gives you, give it back. Be willing to give it back to him. He's given you this life. My brothers and sisters, be willing to give your life back to God by meeting God's requirements. When you meet his requirements, God will bless you. We love you here at God's Got a Plan, and we're praying and believing that God's going to bless you. Keep sending those letters, if you, or if you have any prayer requests, send them to us, and we'll be glad to, to pray over your prayer requests. And we want to thank those of you supporting this ministry, this telecast. God bless you. Have a good life, and keep walking by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you.